All right then, so moving along. We have now talked about not the Hamilton Standard two position propeller, but the Hamilton Standard counterweight to constant speed prop. And we know all about that and how the governor works. Let's see. I'm going to use my old one to see what kind of... What is the source of the fluid for the governor, by the way? Oil supply from what? Engine. For most things, engine. Most things. There'll be an exception. Um, actually, I take that back. What is the source of the fluid for the governor always? It is the engine, engine oil. Um, and what type of pump do we have in there? Johnson's placing, and, and let me see the oil pressure output. The oil pre the the oil pressure of the governor. That's a better way to phrase it. Oil pressure of the governor is it constant or variable? Constant. Constant is set by on the side of it. It has a a pressure relief valve that is set. And if you set it too high, you can cause damage. And if you set it too low, you can get a prop that doesn't work. So it is. Always, all the time, constant. What what about is that pressure for that, roughly? 150 to 300. 150 to 300, all right. How do you get the oil from the prop governor to the propeller? How do you get the oil from the prop governor to the prop? Well, first we start with the governor. Then the next thing is... Steel what? Steel fitting. Okay, we're going to go that route. Steel fitting. Then a stainless steel tube. All the way to the front. Through the crankshaft. All right, what if it's continental? Uh, it comes through the oil gallery into the governor, governor, back into the uh, crankcase, then to the oil transfer collar, oil transfer collar, to the crank, through the front, and up. Moving back onto this. Talked about that prop. Let's talk about the next one. Let's see, what do we got? <coughs> All right, got my notes. This is a Macaulay. How do I know it's Macaulay? It's got a sticker right there that says Macaulay on it. So we have, and that's not important to, to a great extent. But right now, let's just look at it. We have a non-counterweighted propeller. So non-counterweighted. What do we know about a non-counterweighted propeller? We have a fixed force of a variable force. The fixed force is always, all the time, CTF. Fixed force is C. Because you can't increase CTF and you can't decrease it except with engine RPM, that doesn't count. So we have no counterweights. So what drives it to low blade angle? Yeah. What drives it to high blade angle? Oil pressure. Oil pressure. Is this going to be on a single or a twin? Single. All right, so this would be very similar to the prop. This is the prop I have on my aircraft. So a uh, single engine, I get in the aircraft and start it up. What position is the blade going to probably be in already? low pitch so where I shut it down it's where it's going to be and that's absolutely fine and so we know now that uh, centrifugal twisting force draining oil will send it to low 
pitch. low pitch. And if we add oil pressure, high pitch. It's going to take governor oil pressure to change it. So it's going to want to already be in a low pitch position. So. All right. Probably have a lot. To, okay, so Macaulay. M C C A U L E Y. Macaulay props. All right. Now let's just go with I got prop design. Uh, very popular for general aircraft. That's a very popular, very popular propeller. Uh, used on a lot of light, medium, general uh, size, general aviation aircraft. Uh, there are two basic designs, and this is good to know. Two basic designs. I'll say different. There is. I'm almost out of room here. The, um, well, I'll let you do that. I'm going to clear this off. Can I clear it? Yeah. Clear. Two basic designs. One is the threaded. And two is the threadless. That's where the threads have been stripped out. All right, the threaded uh, uses a threaded retention nut. It uses a threaded retention nut. Nut to hold, I didn't make myself enough room, hold blade into hub. Blade into hub. And the threadless, this is the modern design. Modern design uh, with a higher TBO, with higher, higher TBO. It uses a split retainer, uses a, uh, uses, or it's not a, uses split retainers. To hold blade into the hub. To hold blade into hub. Uh, let's see if I have any pictures of this. There we go. If you look real careful right here, you can see the split ring. It's going to hold that into the hub. So that's your new modern design. That's your threadless. The thread, there's a threaded. Big old threads. So you got to screw this cap on the end in there. Yes. Is that like the big three blade one that that's in a big section by the front parts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. I can skip to a lot of this. Uses centrifugal twisting force and spring pressure now to cause the prop to go to. Right. Now, key in on that. Uses centrifugal twisting force. And I can put any and anything at that point. But centrifugal twisting force, you know, because it's non counterweighted, it's going to go to. That's your low. And so it's going to use a spring to assist with that. And therefore, it's going to use oil pressure to counteract that and go to a high pitch. All right. So threadless um, uses CTF and spring and spring. Uh, 
to drive to low, well, pitch is a much easier word to write, so I'm just going to, low blade angle pitch. Um, and then uses, uses governor, oil pressure, oil pressure to drive to high pitch. All right, maybe I'm being lazy, but I don't want to write all of this because it's not as important. All right, so what do we got here? We've got these very, very large ball bearings in there. Um, and we've got this piston. And this is the thing that cracks me up. This piece right here, that red piece, that is phenolic. It's a, it's a, I, I can never really describe phenolic real well. It's a fibrous kind of a plastic piece. And... For the life of me, I don't know why it's not steel or, or aluminum, but apparently there's not a lot of pressure on there for some strange reason. But if we look at this, here's the piston right here, and there's the oil ring right there to keep it from leaking past. So we will have a transfer tube that's going to come up here, through here. You can't see it under the spring, but it's in there. And oil holes right here. So oil will come out of here, filling this area pushing the piston back and when it pushes the piston back it's going to push on this right here which is going to push on this pin which is attached to the blade and causes the blade to rotate back and when the blade rotates back it's going to go to higher pitch but I don't want to write all that. So blades are installed in the hub and rotate on large ball bearings. An internal piston rides inside a cylinder. The piston's connected to the blade actuating link. As the piston moves, the blade actuating link rotates and the blade actuating pin install the butt end of the blade rides inside the actuating link. Well, I said butt and a-hole tonight, damn. Yeah, you're oh man, huh? You said really? <laughs> I said butthole? Oh, b hole. I said b hole. Okay. Uh, anyway, so as it rotates back, um, so the high and low pitch stops. High and low pitch stops are internal. Which is to say that you just can't have a prop just going all every single angle that wants to, you actually have high and low pitch stops in here. And if you think it through, that makes some sense because at some point you just can't have it to continue to go to this feathering angle. So they're built into here. Um, they'll use shims, they'll put the stops in here. I honestly don't know exactly where the, the uh, uh, stops are in this particular prop. And why would I not know where they are in this particular prop? Oh, I am supposed to be opening them up. That's why. And I never have in the field, and I never will, I don't think. Um, I could, you could probably find them. I, I want to say there's some shims in a lot of these that are put behind the piston that, that stop it. Um, I will point out that there's a bunch of weights on here. What are those right there? Those are weights to do what? Balance. Those are balance weights. All right. Also, this is a cutaway. They don't look like this on the plane. Just so everybody say, you know, come up to me afterwards. Kevin, I don't understand. I mean, with all that big section missing, won't it be out of balance? Yeah, it would. So, um. It wouldn't work very well. No, it's going to leak oil real bad. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> all right. This one is a little kind of confusing. So, uh, some props, some props. <laughs> What's that? Oh, because I'm looking down here. Sorry. Um, I meant not to do that one. Sub EV. Some props, that's how much I skipped. Some props are completely sealed um, with exception of venting through spiral pins.
Now, you're wondering, what is a spiral pin? Uh, they look like little itty bitty tiny roll pins. And I, to be honest with you, I don't completely understand. There's an oil in here. And uh, if you got spiral pins coming through this, they're very, very small vents. That means there's not oil in here. They must just permanently grease the ball bearings. Not 100% on that one. Um, but contrast that, and it's important that I bring that up because, and we'll make this like in line with what I'm going to write. Um, oops. All right, one other note before I do that. Not what I wanted. No field lubrication is possible. One of the reasons why I like this, you can't get screwed up with grease. All right, two, uh, some props, this is of the Macaulay line, are um, filled with dyed engine oil. And I'm pretty sure it's red on all of them. Red dyed engine oil. Why would they do that? Yep. Leaking red dye indicates a crack. A cracked uh, hub or failed seal. So if you get a little bit of red, you just wipe it away, right? If you're going to do that, make sure that the, the prop depart light bulb is working. Oh, they just, that tremendous amount of stress, stress. So they just, they crack on them, all on their own. Yeah, fatigue, stress, pulling on the propeller blades to pull the airplane around from the tip running into something. Um, all right. Uh, governor, we don't really have to talk about that. We really did that. I'll do setup and adjustment, which I think would be B. Setup and adjustment. All right. So this is something that you, in general aviation, you will do a lot of, and that is take these props off and put the prop back on because you're going to send it out to somebody to deal with because you're not going to touch them because you're not allowed to. So when working on any constant speed prop, the first tool you need is a five-gallon bucket. That's tool number one. Do not make that tool number two. You will regret things. So tool number one is a five-gallon bucket. And the reason why is because this prop is full of oil and so is the crankshaft. So when you're going to take one off, of course, you take off the spinner and you, well, you index the spinner very carefully with tape. You don't write it, sure. So you know exactly the way it came on and reference it on the propeller. So you know which, because the propeller is going to, you know, move around too. And make sure everything is indexed and take it off. And then when you get ready to take it off, you put the five gallon bucket underneath the prop and you loosen up the prop bolts and you have a buddy help you because these things are quite heavy and expensive so you don't want to drop it and you work it off the prop flange and as you're doing it oil will start going everywhere but you have a bucket so you're prepared then you take off the propeller and you put this end down into the bucket so it drains down into the bucket also it sits quite nicely on a bucket because they don't sit real well on the floor so so there you go so you get a bucket and then then, like most mechanics will do, you don't want to get dust inside of the flange of the crankshaft, so they take a rag and shove it down in there. Forget about it. And forget about it. So I don't, I recommend covering the hole, definitely. I do not recommend shoving the rag down in there. I think I told you guys a story about a prop that wouldn't work. Shredded. Yeah, they, well, they took the prop to the prop shop. Oh, I got that from, that was my eye seminar, the guys at the prop shop, you know. Somebody pulled in, ah, prop, damn, you guys have overhauled damn prop, nut doesn't work. Man. People suck, you know, she knew we should have took it somewhere else. 
you fix it. And so they go, all right, you know, take off the prop. The minute they get it, it's just shredded rag coming out. You know, it's like, well, I think our prop was okay. Um, but now we have to take it apart and pull all the rag pieces out. So um, cover that up. We send the prop out, you get it back. And first thing you want to do is inside of here, there's an O-ring. And that O-ring is going to go on the prop flange, the pilot valve or the pilot of the flange. So you, you don't want to damage that O-ring. If you damage that O-ring, then the prop's going to leak, and then, then you're going to get oil on the windshield, and you got to take the prop off, got to get a new O-ring, got to torque all this stuff, the same deal. So all right, so you got to lubricate the O-ring. O-ring, set up an adjustment. Let me see. So we're actually putting it back on. Lube O-ring. Got to lube the O-ring. Um, obviously, use proper torque and safety wire. Use proper torque and safety wire. Do you guys take a look at the propeller that is on the turbocharged Lycoming and the hell that it is to safety wire that propeller? So if you haven't, you're really missing out. It does have very large um, nuts on it. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They are non-castellated, self-locking nuts. Those self-locking nuts are not part of that installation. It's just what I had to put it on. That would be part of the crankshaft flange that what it screws into. So when you see the big nuts go, that doesn't look hard. It's the other side that you have to turn in safety. And it is, it is really hard, and you have to use a wrench adapter to get in there, and you're torquing it. And I actually had a mechanic one time who came up to me. It was funny. He's like, Kevin, you know how those are so hard to do? I'm like, yes, I'm well aware. Dude, and like one day I had an epiphany. I figured out exactly how to do it. It's so simple. He said, you torque it, which is not hard. And then once you torque it, you take a Sharpie, and you put a Sharpie mark where the nut and the, then on here, so Sharpie mark where the nut stops and on the propeller. And then you get them all torqued and you have the Sharpie mark on each one. Then you just use a wrench and just back it off so you can run the safety wire through and just go right back to where, because you can't torque it once the safety wire is through. Then you just open end wrench, go right back where the line was. I don't think torquing works that way. I don't think you should be working. Anyway, uh, so you put it on, use proper torque and safety wire. How many props have you done? Yeah. Um, proper torque. Um, use proper torque and safety wire. Um, there is a recommend, recommended. Uh, what do you call recommend? It's mandatory. Mandatory grease. Make sure that you use the exact grease you're supposed to use exactly like. And where do you find that data? Usually on the sticker on the front, and it comes from the prop shop. If the prop shop didn't send it to you, I'd call them up. Why didn't I need your grease? Come on. You know, you bought a big tub of it. Just give me a little tiny bit. doesn't take much. A little dab will do you. Get the sticker filled out for us. Uh, oh, prop manual. Yeah. Why would the sticker fall off? What were you doing to this plane? <laughs> all right, so we, so we have it all safety. What size safety wire do we use? Yeah, if you don't know what, use 040, uh, because like I said, some manuals call for 040, some say 041. I did hear there was a service bulletin on that real hard to do prop that said 032, but I have not seen that service manual or, or that service bulletin. All right, so you get it all on, and the last thing you're going to want to do is run engine, check for leaks. Check for leaks and set uh, high RPM, PM, high RPM um, stop screw. All right, so constant speed prop. We do not have static RPM limits like you would with the fixed. It goes right up to and touches red line. So in order to do that, you're going to take the aircraft out. You're going to warm it up to operating temperatures. Uh, you want, it depends on where you're at. Like 
if you're like an executive, you got to go the run-up area. But if you're somewhere in your hangar, I would recommend sweeping underneath the aircraft in a big area first because little pebbles are hard on these things. So you're going to get the engine up to operating temperature, and you're going to run it right up to full throttle, just wide open. And you're going to watch where that RPM line goes to. Um, let me repeat that. You don't watch where it goes to. Wow, I watched it go 300 RPM over red line. Um, you're going to make sure that it doesn't exceed red line. And if it does, then you're going to shut down. This is a very important part, shut down. If you don't remember anything I said, you're going to shut the engine down before you do this. And you're going to go to the governor, which on my plane is, like if this there. is the prop, it's about right there. So it's, that's why I like to shut down first. Um, and there's a set screw on the governor that just adjusts the arm. So when I go in the, when I'm pushing forward on the prop control, that arm comes forward and hits a stop screw. And so if I move the stop screw in, it's like pulling the knob out, which makes it go into a slower RPM. So if it's over red line, um, you gotta be real careful when you're doing that. Like I bring it up to red line, I'll, I'll give it a little bit more, cause you can go just a little bit more. And if it keeps going, I'm like, nah, that's not gonna work. Um, if it's too slow, say if I'm supposed to have 24 and I get 23, then we, back the screw out a little bit right so set your red line now you have to be careful with this because um, a pilot may complain that on flight it it's not quite right you'll get it very close but then you got to watch it in flight also what's the other big concern about this you always have the right answer but not the one I'm looking for <laughs> he is absolutely right don't bake the engine this would be very very important how about don't trust the pro don't trust the tack. So don't trust trust the tack. Uh, if you have an analog gauge, you're kind of like one eye closed, looking at it, going, "Yeah, that looks about right." Uh, I recommend a handheld tack checker. Um, do you guys have digital tacks in your plane? Yeah, well, now if I have the, the JPI digital, which drives me nuts because I'm ah, it's over red line. Well, what is it? It's 2402. You know, and so I'm out there adjusting the screw. Eh, you, it doesn't work that way. So it's, it's, you'd be surprised how temperature sensitive it is. So on a very hot day um, on takeoff, I can look over and the oil's thin. It's, it's one thing. If it's thick, it's another. So um, anyway, so, but you got to get do that. So set the high RPM stop screw, which is, where's the stop screw on this? The, how do you set the high RPM on this one? Where on the propeller would I adjust it? Huh? Not on the prop. It's on the governor. It's on the governor. So you don't set the height, the stop, the uh, pitch stops on the prop. It's on the governor. Got it? Uh, All right. Okay. Which one is this? Macaulay. Oops. This is backwards. I am, come on, get with the program. Oh, okay, that's why. Macaulay, it is the Macaulay. I didn't realize it. The Macaulay. Um, same thing, just a different photo that I stole from the internet. We've got the piston that moves back and forth. Blade actuating link actuates on the blade right here, rotating it around. Rides on ball bearings. This type is, there's one of two types. This is which type? Threadless, which was the better type? Threadless. Threadless. More, modern. More modern, higher TBO. Mo better butter. All right, this is it's an internal drawing of it. Told you there's how the oil gets through the center. You couldn't see it because of the spring. Comes out the piston, pushes on the piston, pushes it back. There we go. Oh, there it is. High pitch stop spacer is right there. Told you it's a spacer. And low pitch stop spacer is right there. So that's what prevents it from going and how do you how do you adjust those it's really easy you send it out take it off send it out all right same thing probably the same picture i showed you before oh yeah there we go we got a little bit of red leakage coming out of there because it's cracked Notice this hub is internally lubricated with red dyed oil, which is independent of engine lubricating oil system. It should say, if you see leaking, please call 1-800. No. 
Yeah. All right, so we got the Macaulay. All right, this particular Macaulay. Is it counterweighted? No. All you got to do is read or wrote. So what moves the prop to low pitch? And spring pressure. What moves it to high pitch? From the? Governor. Governor. All right, so this is uh, increase speed or spring pressure. We in, increase the speed or spring pressure? Under speed. For under speed, we got to drain oil to decrease pitch. Is that right? Under speed. Yes, it is. We got to flatten it out. So decrease. If it's over speed, add oil to increase pitch and bring it back in. Okay. What do they find? I don't know. We'll never know. Okay, let's move on to heart soul. Heart soul. goes back and forth. Hartzell. Uh, Hartzell is going to have two basic designs. They have the steel hub and the compact. The compact is bigger than the steel hub, if you ask me. So the, the way to tell it is the steel hub has external operating mechanisms. It's the PT6 one that's on that you plug it in with air. It has external pins on it. And a lot of mechanism that you can get your fingers caught in. That's the steel. And the, the compact is all internal, and you can't really see any of the operating mechanism. So, for example, that's a busy picture. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's got an external pin here. So I think this is the steel hub one. There we go. No, that has no external mechanisms whatsoever. It just has counterweights. So everything else, it's a cutaway, so everything's going to be hidden, so it's compact. That's the same picture. All right, that's all I have. I should take more pictures of our shop. All right, so that one doesn't show all the, the mechanisms quite like I would like it to, but nevertheless. All right, Hartzell. Heart soul props. All right, so we have the two designs. We have the steel hub. Steel hub has exposed operating mechanisms. And we have the compact. No exposed operating mechanism. All right, let's talk about uh, Compact is kind of the more modern design. But I want to say there's some applications that you can't switch it over. I want to say like the PT6. Yeah, you don't use the compact. Unlike the Macaulay that had the thread and the threadless, at this point it's kind of like, you know, when I was looking to buy a 182, I was one of the first things I looked at, like, eh, you got the threaded Macaulay, uh, it's going to be expensive. They pretty much just take them off and throw them away. It's, but, um, so I want to say the Hartzell Steel Hub design was more of the original, but it's still used on the PT6 engines. There is, there is not a compact design for it. But if you're looking more at the piston side of things, I want to say that the Steel Hub and moved over more towards the compact, if I got that right. So, all right. Uh, 
trying to make this like so it's not just so drawn out. Um, okay. So in this, obviously, and both with the Macaulay, we could have, and maybe I could do this, either one. We could say either one. Either Macaulay or Hartzell. Uh, they'll come in either counterweighted or non-counterweighted. Counterweighted or non-counterweighted. I'll just put CW. Since you can't read it, I'm writing anyway, since I wrote it so sloppy. Right? So, M-C-C-A-U-L-E-Y. Boy, that was terrible. So either one can come in counterweighted or non-counterweighted. And either one of them is going to operate exactly like the other one. So if it's um, non-counterweight, then CTF will low pitch. Low pitch. Uh, again, we're just covering this again for like the third time or fourth time. Low Appreciate pitch. It. And if it's counterweighted, then s uh, hang on. We should just finish this off. Let's see that. Non counterweight CTF to low pitch and governor pressure to high pitch. High pitch. Oh, it's just the opposite. And if we have a counterweighted prop, then CTF is to high pitch and yeah. governor pressure is low pitch. And again, why do I want that? There we go. So if you have a twin engine aircraft and you lose oil pressure, the last thing you need is also for that thing to be stuck in low pitch, windmilling like crazy. You want it to feather and you need to do this without oil pressure. So centrifugal twisting force, you lose oil pressure, the engine's still rotating because the air is coming through or the engine failed. As long as it's not seized up, it's going to rotate. The rotating, the counterweights on it, are going to drive the blades forward into a feather. So that's why you do it on a twin. Why not do it that way on all aircraft? Because your one engine, it doesn't really matter if it fails. <laughs> <laughs> You're doomed anyway. Well, maybe the, the simplest answer is why add weight to something you don't need, yeah. right? Because look at it, they're just bolted on there. I mean, it's a different blade to do that, but hey, you can get rid of a couple pounds up front of counterweights. So, I don't know, if nothing else, you got that going for you. Let's get rid of a little weight up there. But it's obvious why we want to do it with a, a twin engine. So, all right, um, let's see, well, we got that. decide what to cover. So let's do a little maintenance. This is a big deal. Maintenance on the Hartzell propellers. Uh, the compact prop, prop requires greasing. Uh, best thing I could say about that is follow the manual. And you had better follow the most recent. And when I say recent, I mean the absolute latest, most recent, fresh copy that Hartzell has to offer you. Do not use an old manual. Do not listen to what somebody else in the shop just did because I have seen it change over the years. And so what I believe it is right now is you only put in four ounces of grease when you grease the prop. 
and when I was at, and it's been a couple of years since I went to heard these these fine folks talk about this particular prop, they had made some mention of something that I had never heard before, and that the prop is only designed to hold X number of ounces of grease. And when you reach that limit, you really need to overhaul the prop because they're sealed. The grease doesn't come out anywhere. And we'll, we'll watch a really good video. I like the video. Um, so we'll watch the video on how to do this. Did you guys watch it? Mm -hmm. the, thing, oh, so I'll tell you, the thing I love about this video is the guy who's in it is really a heart soul mechanic. So I heard when they were shooting the video, he's like, yeah, I'll do it. And so he's actually a mechanic. Um, so I thought it was cool. But anyway, so you have these right there. Zerk fittings. And there should be more um, on each side. Total of two. Let me see. From what we saw, it was just you crack one off. Yeah, take, all right, so you take one off. And then Yes, yeah, so you'd have to do both sides. It makes them four. I'll have to look that one up, but I think there's, yeah. One, two, three, four. Two on each side. Um, sometimes they'll use them as caps. Sometimes, well, anyway, I don't want to, we'll see. But the point I want to make right now before I lose everybody is there are these grease zerks all over the hub, and I believe there's four. And some of them only have two because they use caps. Sometimes they use a grease fitting as a cap. So you got to pay attention to what you're doing because you have to pull out one of the grease fittings because it's really only there as a cap. They just use it as a grease fitting. So you could inadvertently go, wow, there's four of these things and put grease in all of them. In fact, I was listening to a podcast, which I won't name, but the person on the podcast said, yeah, I just greased my prop this weekend. My God, it took like four tubes. You know, it's like they just filled the whole... So... Um, that's why I tell you, be really careful with these propellers because if you decide that you want to fill the prop full of grease, your next step is to overhaul, overhaul the prop. Well, you don't really have to overhaul it, so I said you can send it out for a, a clean and reseal. That's when they get inside and go, oh, I'm sorry, this is no good. You, <laughs> you need a new one. So, all right. So follow the manual. Um, but I'll write some of the notes here that I know to be believed to be true. So remove one of the grease fittings, one of the Zerk fittings or grease fittings. One of the fittings um, and lubricate and lube and lube. Preferable to apply grease to the fitting located nearest the leading edge of the blade on a tractor. So fill um, the fitting nearest the leading edge, nearest the leading edge on tractor installations. Um, you always use the same grease, always use same grease as used at overhaul. And how would you know what grease they used at overhaul? The on the it's a little sticker on the prop. All right, this one's a little different in that we can do a low pitch adjustment. Low pitch adjustment. Uh, the steel hubs have a low pitch adjusted by adjusting the blade clamp. Blade clamps will do a steel. Steel hub. Blade adjustment. Um, adjust blade clamps. Adjust blade clamps. I've never done that. I'm not even sure I want to do that. Um, on the compact hub, Um, low pitch is adjusted. Low, um, with the screw. With screw um, at the front of the cylinder. Okay. 
So you take off the spinner, you've exposed the prop, you walk right at the prop, and hey, look, right dead center in the middle of the prop. This is not an arch, this is a Macaulay. And here where this screw is, which I'm not going to lift up because it weighs 200 pounds, there's a screw here. This is not the adjustment screw because this is a Macaulay, and that's just not what that screw is for. But on the Hartzell, it's actually an internal wrenching screw and a nut. Back off the nut, screw it in, and you guys are welcome to do it on a Hartzell. Start, you'll watch the blades rotate. So you can adjust the low pitch with that. So if it was over speeding, you could adjust it there. If it's just a little bit, you could adjust it at the governor too. Does it give you parameters for? I've only had to do it once and I was working with somebody else and they did it. And I thought, eh. At that point, I even thought I would have done it with the governor. Yeah. So. All right, let me see real quick here. What do we got? Hartzell steel hub non-feathering. So if it's non-feathering, does it have counterweights? No. no. How about the Hartzell compact? Fe counterweights? No. no. So what moves the prop to low pitch? CTF. CTF. What moves it to high pitch? Oil pressure. Oil pressure. All right, so we got the speeder spring. It's, it's going to be the same. Notice it's, once we get left to the Hamilton standard, I think it's non-counterweighted is all the same. All right, that's a really good place to start because now we can talk about feathering props. For a dollar.